Hi, I'm John Hoverston with Texas Instruments. I'm an RF systems engineer with the Mobile Device RF Power Group. Today I'd like to talk about how to improve cellular handset transmit efficiency with envelope tracking and average power tracking. In the last decade we've changed the way we use our cell phones dramatically. It's required a huge increase in the data rate, especially in the uplink. That leads to reduced battery life and increased heating. This isn't just a problem for engineers in that uh, thermal budget and the power budget is blown, but also for the end user. The reduction PA efficiency responsible for this heating and battery life problem is due to peak to average ratio and output power. The peak to average ratio comes along with the higher data rates and the output power comes along with the fact that LTE uses many, many bands and incurs a lot of front end losses in typical cell phone. The solution that uh, we propose is advanced PA power management with envelope tracking and average power tracking. I'd like to talk about three different scenarios where envelope tracking and average power tracking are, are very useful and beneficial. I'd like to start with the first scenario, very common to LTE, is high peak to average ratio or high par and high power. You can see that the, the peak power is high and the average power is low, meaning resulting in a high peak to average ratio. The typical approach might be to connect the PA directly to a battery. A lithium ion battery with 3.8 volts uh, would overestimate the amount of voltage needed to run the PA and waste a lot of power. So average power tracking utilizes a, a DC-DC converter controlled by a MIPI RFFE serial interface to, to reduce the amount of headroom supplied to the PA. Um, unfortunately, for a high peak to average ratio waveform, you can see that in these deep valleys, we still dissipate a lot of power. Envelope tracking is the best solution for a high peak to average ratio waveform, especially at high power. Envelope tracking systems provide just the right amount of voltage to operate the PA correctly without dissipating excess energy. In envelope tracking systems, we need to add another interface to the transceiver. Uh, the MIPI standard E-Track analog interface dictates what the uh, PA supply voltage should be at each instant in time. The second scenario to look at is the low peak to average ratio and high power scenario. Again, battery connection wastes a lot of power. Uh, we can see that the APT approach using a DC-DC converter uh, recovers some of that power. And an envelope tracking approach uh, recovers even more power. However, uh, with the reduced peak to average ratio, we don't have those deep valleys where average power tracking is, is wasting a lot of the power. And so in some signals and in some systems, um, APT or ET could be optimal for a low peak to average ratio modulation type. The third scenario is low power. It doesn't matter if the peak to average ratio is high or low. Um, the battery is still the most inefficient option. Average power tracking uh, shows the best result here. Um, we see that, that the DC-DC converter reduces the power supply to the PA dramatically and saves a lot of this red, um, otherwise dissipated power. Envelope tracking does not have as large a benefit at low power because there's a minimum voltage required for the PA to operate. And uh, we're unable to dive into those deep valleys so to summarize those three operating conditions, we have the low to high peak to average ratio and the low to high power um, cases. Envelope tracking is clearly the best for the high peak to average ratio, high power cases like LTE. And then for the low power and the low peak to average ratio cases, we might prefer APT. It's not a question of whether we should use APT or ET, but really we need to find an integrated ET and APT solution. For this next section, I'd like to show just such a solution um, in the lab. I, I have two evaluation boards set up for that purpose. We're comparing here, um, on the left, a battery-powered multiband multimode PA to an APT-ET power management solution um, powering the same multiband multimode PA. Both are supplied from a 3.8 volt battery supply. Um, the RF input power comes from two generators, one here and one here. Both are set to provide an LTE 525 resource block input signal. So this is a high peak to average ratio signal. Both um, evaluation boards are, are set up to source uh, 28 dBm output power as well. And that output signal is monitored on this spectrum analyzer 
This spectrum analyzer monitors the RF output performance of the battery connected evaluation board. You can see we're producing 28 dBm output power and meeting linearity metrics. Um, here is where we want to focus. Both, both spectrum analyzers show 28 dBm output power and better than minus 38 dBc uh, linearity in both the UTRA and the EUTRA um, requirements. The oscilloscope here shows the average power tracking um, waveform and the battery waveform in yellow and red, respectively. Um, and we'll see that change when we switch to envelope tracking mode. Another thing that will change when we switch to envelope tracking mode is the comparison of the temperature of each board. On the left, the battery powered board is about the same temperature as the right, the uh, average power tracking board. That's because we're at this high power, high par operating condition. Upon switching to envelope tracking mode, we'll observe that the uh, board on the right operating in envelope tracking mode gets much cooler. Um, and we'll examine that quantitatively next. In ET mode, the PA supply voltage for the APT ET evaluation board varies with the instantaneous PA output power. Dynamic voltage is being supplied to the PA to maximize its efficiency. Um, note on this spectrum analyzer, the spectrum analyzer indicates that in ET mode, output power is still 28 dBm and linearity is still better than minus 38 dBc. Something I haven't shown um, but has been extensively measured is that all uh, other RF requirements uh, of LTE, including receipt band noise, are met with the envelope tracking solution, the APT solution, and the battery solution. Looking at this thermal image more closely, um, the, the data behind the image indicates that the PA's temperature uh, with the, for the battery supplied PA is 70 degrees Celsius. The temperature in the envelope tracking condition is only 50 degrees. So we're seeing here that envelope tracking for this high power, high par condition common to LTE is a 20, de 20 degree reduction. A careful measurement of system efficiency indicates that as compared to battery operation, envelope tracking operation improves system efficiency by 10 percentage points. That's a 138 milliamp current savings. In low power LTE operation, not measured here, uh, at zero dBm output power, um, we save 26 milliamps, but that's a 72% reduction in battery uh, current requirement. To summarize, envelope tracking is providing us a heat and current reduction, especially in the typical LTE operating condition, high power and high peak to average ratio. APT is still a critical function in that it reduces the battery current for low power and legacy use, use cases. Uh, commercial envelope tracking and APT solutions are available uh, today that meet all the challenging LTE requirements including receipt band noise. Um, and for more information, please take a look at the links. Thanks for watching.